Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Joris and today I'm going to go into part 4 of my series in which I talk about the ETFs that invest in Swiss stock markets and that give a dividend. And today it's going to go over the SPI index. So of the 12 ETFs that, uh, that I found that uh, invest their money in the SIG stock exchange, there are two ETFs that invest their money in the SPI index and the name of the SPI index is in fact the Swiss Performance Index. And in that index, there are the large, the mid and the small caps uh, represented that are noted on the SIG stock exchange. And as you know from the previous video, in which I was talking about the SMIM and the, the, the SPI MIT index that um, I don't really like to invest only in the, in the, the mid cap mid caps because yeah when a small cap becomes a mid cap you take along the right up to the large caps and then it leaves the index and the other way around when it's a large cap and it starts declining, it goes into the mid cap and then you take along with you the right till it's a small cap and it leaves the index. So I don't like that. And that's why I prefer, of course, the SPI, uh, the SMI index or the SLI index for the larger uh, cap in uh, stocks or I prefer then the SPI version in which I include all the stocks so then I can't complain because I have them all and now momentarily there are in the SPI index there are 213 stocks that are on the six stock market uh, represented in total on the six stock market there are 284 or 83 stocks right now so it's not all stocks but it's uh, 213 of those that are in the SPI index and the ETFs that I'm going to show today they don't even invest in all those stocks that are momentarily in the SPI index so it's 213 and you will see that when I go over the ETFs that they don't have 213 in them at all so the first one it's the UBS one and I must say that I'm delighted that uh, in this case for the SPI index the um, providers so the the ETF providers UBS and uh, iShares really performed and they really gave a small total expense ratio of 0.10% which is really 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 nice so the currency on the six it's Swiss francs and it's also one of the cheapest ones that you can buy f to invest in uh, Swiss stocks uh, if you want to buy an ETF so it's 71.83 Swiss francs and it invests in only 194 of the 213 stocks that are in the SPI index and there is almost 1 billion invested in it and as you can see, the five-year and the three-year performance, it's uh, a bit lower than for the SLI and the SMI indexes, but not that bad as uh, the mid mid cap uh, ETFs that I discussed in the previous video. And once again, UBS with an ETF that only provides. Uh, one dividend date so in September on the 8th of September it gives uh, two dividends and the dividend yield isn't that bad so 2.92 percent it's uh, quite up there it's almost the top percentage that you can uh, get from uh, a, a dividend ETF uh, that uh, that invests in Swiss stocks at uh, the Swiss stock exchange so that's definitely not bad at all and if you look at the the next one so once again total expense ratio 
with iShares, which which was quite expensive with the uh, in the previous two videos, if you can remember, 0.45 and 0.51 percent in those, and here they really do what they do normally with a low expense ratio of 0.10 percent, and price 135.93. And this one, it doesn't invest in three out of the 213 stocks. So 210 companies that they include in the in their list. And it's yeah one of the the highest invested uh, ETFs. So 2.6 billion invested in it. I think it's the highest one. The the other one was uh, from UBS with 2.250. Uh, 2.2 250 uh, billion invested in it so yeah it's um, it's quite nice for iShares that they have uh, success and uh, and I think it's also a message uh, that they should lower their expense ratio for the other two uh, ETFs that they have on the six stock market so I hope they hear it and this one is a sampling one, so the previous one was also a sampling one. I forgot to, to mention it, but uh, with this being said, I, I said it. And the performance over five years and three years is more or less the same than the one from UBS, so no big differences there. The big difference is, in fact, that you get more dividends. So you get uh, a spread over March, April and July. Sometimes it also paid in May, but uh, the last year, uh, this year and last year, they didn't uh, give uh, a dividend in May, but the years before they did. And the dividend yield, you, you can see it, it's 2.93%. So the other one was 2.92%. But it, it's also dependent on uh, the cost, of course, of the, of the fund. So almost no difference there. But then I still like it more when the dividends are, are a bit distributed over the years. So you can reinvest them and get that money working for you instead of the, the bank, UBS, in, the, in, in uh, this case, having the money in their pocket the whole time don't uh, they, they aren't letting it work for you I don't know it in fact so when you receive it you can let it work and uh, you know for sure that that the dividend is uh, well spent and also when you want to retire it's also nice that you have a little bit of a distribution of, of the dividends over the year instead of uh, receiving a huge different di uh, dividend on one day of uh, the year and then the standard overview so as you can see they are quite nice next to each other so almost no differences between them but then this time my preference isn't the UBS one but it's the the ETF from uh, iShares because it it distributes more dividends over the year so with that being said, I hope uh, that you like this kind of content and that you consider subscribing to, to my channel. It would help out uh, to know whether or not I'm doing the right things, yes or no. Hit that like button if you like and see you on the next video on my YouTube channel. Bye!